This professional featherweight bout is set for three five-minute rounds, and it is brought to you by our friends at Smoky Mountain CBD. And now introducing first, he's fighting out of the blue corner. He steps into the cage tonight with a professional record of six wins and one loss. His height, five feet nine, having weighed in at 145.4 pounds. He trains with ring combat sports and he fights out of Whitfield, Virginia. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Razor His opponent, across the cage and fighting out of the red corner. He steps into the cage tonight with a professional record of seven wins and eight losses. He steps into the cage at a height of five feet, seven inches, having weighed in at 144.8 pounds. He trains with NKI and he fights out of Knoxville, Tennessee. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you, this is the Golden Boy, Brendan McMahon. Your referee for this professional bout will be Big Luke Wilson. On a Saturday in Knoxville, Tennessee, your co-main event is underway. Yeah, interesting. Robbie Ring's been very vocal about how he plans on getting back to his grappling. So just a matter of when is he going to look to set it up. Loves that Darce. He briefly thought about it, but Mac Mahan is well-researched. He's well-trained, and he knows what Robbie's setups look like. So important for Mac Mahan to just kind of free some space and get back to range if he can. Yeah, Mac Mahan only been submitted twice in his career, and that was some time ago. Yeah, McMahon also cornered Dusty Little when Dusty Little fought Robbie Ring. So there's a little bit of familiarity there, and Robbie Ring er, caught him with the Dars choke. So again, for McMahon, these are things that you've seen before. You've been able to review the footage, and now that he's got it back at distance, this is where he wants it. He's going to have to get a little real estate here, but beautiful jab sneaks through. If he can land something to get Robbie Wing Ring questioning himself, it would serve him well, but Ring is just such a top prospect. He does everything so well, it's hard to find where the weakness is. Nice high kick there from Ring. Oh, and a beautiful clubbing overhand right from McMahon. Yeah, puts a little redness on the left eye there, Ring. Yeah, and again, if this becomes a punchy kicky match, I think McMahon's comfortable with letting Ring, not let him hit you, but if you want to exchange one for one, two for two, McMahon's got some power. He's got that karate base. He's very comfortable as a striker. In his two shots that he lands, they're going to do a lot of damage. Nice job by Ring there on the feint for the takedown, throwing a nice three-punch combination. And then a left body kick, that'll do some damage as well. A little redness on the face of the Golden Boy as well. Well, they're definitely both in a proper fight, no doubt about that. Robbie Ring visually looks like the bigger man in there. Of course, he's taller, but he put on about 14 pounds between weigh-ins, so he's about 160 pounds in there, and if he can just lean on Mac Mahan against the cage here and slow him down a little bit, then uh, maybe one of these takedowns are going to materialize. Yeah, I think we kind of noticed yesterday that there is a sizable size advantage, no uh, pun intended, in favor of Ring, and he's landing some nice knees right now in the clinch. Beautiful work from the clinch. Obviously, Robbie being the bigger, stronger guy in that clinch, is he's, he's making McMahon just leaning on him and draining him out. But that tie clinch allows you to get off beautiful knees to the body. And Ring is just growing in confidence now. Yeah, Ring, uh, if you, you watch him on social media, you can tell this guy, uh, he's in the gym constantly. And cardio should look to hold up here. Yeah, at the questionnaire yesterday, they kind of asked him about getting back to your grappling. He's like, listen, I'd, I'd, I'd love to do exactly this, but I'm comfortable wherever the fight takes place, and you're seeing that comfortness. Yeah, takedown there for Ring. McMahon overcommitted to a right hand. 
Robbie timed it perfectly, and now he finds himself on top. Yeah, again, it's just smart thinking. I mean, you spend two and a half minutes striking with this guy, giving him a false sense of this is going to be a striking match. And then as soon as he overcommits, just for a moment, beautiful level change by Robbie Ring to plant him on the ground. And now he's got two and a half minutes to uh, to get some, you know, maybe advanced position, look for a submission. But at the very least, this is uh, this is very good in the judge's eyes. The age discrepancy, too, you know, the golden boy, Brandon McMahon, 12 years older, right? So Father Time is undefeated. Not that he couldn't insert himself into this fight and work his way back. But right now you're seeing Ring, the size, the strength advantage, and honestly that, that's, that's what's got him in top control here at the moment. Yeah, that's exactly it. And we saw earlier tonight Brenner Medina was like 16 years older than Kevin Hernandez, and he used that grown man strength. But Robbie's not a little boy. Robbie's 23 years old with 10 amateur fights, 7 pro fights, and he's been doing this since he was a, a small child. So beautiful look here with the rear naked choke but a minute and a half left it looks like he's a tad bit high McMahon if he can build a base he can come out the back door but Robbie does a good job of using that far left hook on the leg he's gonna need to be careful getting that arm out of there because I think arm bar may be coming oh he's looking for Kimura oh and that now, angle is getting now it's nasty. on the wrong scene oh a Brandon McMahon ends up on top and a scramble in the other half of this arena erupts. Man, that was very intelligent submission defense from the Golden Boy. Absolutely. And McMahon welcomed the grappling yesterday when we said, you know, what do you feel about Robbie Ring grappling? He said, I would love to have a striking battle, but we're prepared to take this wherever it needs to be. Robbie Ring, beautiful takedown, beautiful top control, looking for the submission. But again, McMahon not willing to go quietly. And he finds that space, he makes it move. Yeah, Ring is so good at hitting sweeps. He's dangerous off of his back. You saw it in the Josh Delgadillo fight before Ring went to Contender Series. Uh, Delgadillo actually landed a couple takedowns on Ring. Ring found a triangle choke. So you just really can never rest on your loyal uh, laurels when you're in there with Robbie Ring. Yeah, but I mean, it's, it's still a victory for uh, McMahon in that he knows he could get up once. He knows he could reverse. He knows he could, you know, kind of hang with Robbie in certain spots. And all he's got to do is just, just get some respect continuously work your way back up and then find those openings. Just like the Josh Booker fight from earlier, it's not how the fight starts, it's how the fight ends. So McMahon needs to make some adjustments, but he's not out of this one. Ring had a moment there where he thought about looking for that signature Darce, but he finishes the round raining down knees. Respect between these two. And McMahon going back to his corner, he's trying to energize his fan base. Yeah, I was just going to say, I mean, maybe Ladies it's the battle of the tires first, but I see Robbie walk back to his corner. It looks like he already broke the sweat. And then you see McMahon walk back to his corner, and he's flexing for the gang. So uh, expect a very hard second and third round because uh, neither person seems to be slowing down one bit. One of the first events I ever attended in an employment capacity with Harry's Fight Series, uh, Cutman Mark Laws told me, that's Robbie Ring. That kid lives in the gym. He's going places. And honestly... Robbie Ring fights like somebody who lives in a gym. He's so technically sound in all areas of his game, and the fitness is definitely on point. Uh, really good first round for Ring, but to your point, Cody, Golden Boy, Brandon McMahon, not out of this, and if anyone's got the veteran savvy and know how to make some adjustments, it's that man right there. Cage door is closed. Round two of your co-main event is underway. We'll see how McMahon approaches the striking exchanges this time. He's a little more conservative knowing that Robbie can just change levels on him. Being the smaller guy is not always a disadvantage. I mean, he's got that speed in the inside. He can kind of move around. He can use that lower center of gravity to stay under Robbie. But you got to fight a flawless fight because, again, at any point you have one slight slip up. Robbie's the kind of guy that can capitalize. He's got a long jab. You see him just landed right there. And... He's very focused. McMahon with another beautiful overhand right, just like he landed in the first, but Robbie just eats it like a sandwich and continues to uh, do his thing. Yeah, that low kick there was so well-timed. It dropped, dropped McMahon to the ground, and now Robbie's on top looking to initiate something. McMahon looking at the commentary table as if to say it's no big deal. Yeah, he's, feeling, he's pulling a Frank Shamrock versus Boss Rutten from Pancras for the old school fans where he's just having a good time. Yeah, he's not in the greatest position right now, but Robbie's hitting him and, and, and he's smiling. He's having fun in there. There needs to be just more than having a good time. He needs to work his way back into this. And what would really benefit from him is quick explosion, get back up to his feet, because the longer Robbie clings on to him is, is not going to be very favorable. Yeah, and Ring just landed a very vicious knee to the body uh, technique that he's very familiar with. That was used 
against him in his contender series fight, and it looks like it's a new wrinkle in his game. Yeah, McMahon's got a two-on-one wrist control on Robbie's right arm, so th yeah, that's exactly it. Just control, control, and find your opportunity to stand up. And this is a war right now. Is it ever? McMahon's feeling good, but again, Robbie is just so focused. McMahon's hitting himself. He's trying to fight the ego of Ring. He's felt his skills. He wants to fight the ego of that man. Stuffs the takedown. He's on a neck. Ring's really, really crafty here. I think he's intelligently defending no, the this neck. This is a five-finger guillotine choke, and honestly, it looks pretty tight. With it, he can stay on his feet. Nice little elbow. Those elbows will do him some good, but oh, it's the battle for top here. It's Kenny can't stay upwards. And you got three minutes to go in round number two. McMahon looking like a madman there for the brief moment that he had some space. This thing's heating up, and, and, and again, there's so much time left to go, but I'm honestly, I'm actually upset with our matchmaker, Tim Lloyd, that there's not a title on the line. I want to see this thing go 25. These guys are putting it on there, and they look like they can just keep going. Yeah, you got a couple top 15 flyweights, and... Uh, Featherweights. Excuse me, yes, and this is definitely definitely showing you a high skill level bout right now. Ring raining down some blows to the side of the head of McMahon. Yeah, McMahon did good when he was able to get his back to the cage and land some short elbows on Robbie, but again, when he has his back turned to Robbie, there's just nothing he can do. And he can smile, he can talk game, and it's all good strategy. He's trying to, like you said, play to the ego, get Robbie to get emotionally invested and make that mistake. But again, he's got to break the grip. He's got to fight the hands, break the grip, turn into Robbie, and get back to distance, just like this. Just right, yeah, just right on cue. McMahon in on a single leg now. I would bail on it and get back to striking range because even a takedown allows Robbie to potentially hit a sweep. He needs to just separate, push away, and get back to landing that right hand. Nice little old school foot yeah, stomp. Look at that. <laughs> McMahon briefly just, I wouldn't say taking a break, this is exhausting, but maybe just catching his breath before another unleashing another explosion. The problem with Robbie's being so tall is that it's hard to elevate him off of his feet, you know? It, getting low on a single leg, it's not quite going to do it. Yeah, you might see that play out in the main event, too, with uh, Luis Pena. He's got kind of similar features being so lanky. Yeah, Luis Pena is 6'3", 160 pounds, right? Ro Robbie is a lot more filled out. And uh, again, I mean, just somebody that... Oh, is, that choke. Oh, that choke beautiful. is going to do it, Ring. Beautiful. Crank up the guillotine round two. Robbie Ring. Silenced one half of the Joe and the other half is going ballistic right now. Well, I tell you what, I'm not so mad at Tim anymore. I would have taken a five rounder, but Robbie, pff, you don't get paid by the minute, you get paid by the performance. And Robbie with a hell of a performance. If he wanted to go back and change his critics' minds, kind of put himself back on the on the talk of everyone's tongue, that was a performance to go out there and do it. Very solid first round, second round did exactly what he needed to do and found that opening for a high elbow guillotine. So smart adjustments from Robbie and the prospect's back. Yeah, Mac, uh, Mac Mahan stayed on that single leg and that ended up being to his detriment as Robbie was able to lock in that high angle guillotine choke and secure a round two victory for himself. Seven and one. We will hear from the winner, Robbie Ring, in just a moment. And I'll be very curious to hear where his head's at and what is on the agenda for that man as we go into the second half of 2024. Lance Green is in the ring. To make this one official, we go to Lance Green. Ladies and gentlemen, your referee, Big Luke Wilson, has brought a stop to this fight. Three minutes and 43 seconds into round number two. Your winner, Razor Robbie! 